Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Marie Soleil. Uh, I am the presenter today. Um, some of you, if not most of you know me, I have a functional and technical background. I've been implementing Business Central for over uh, 20 years now. Uh, I've also worked with CRM, Dynamics for Sales, reporting and other partner solutions for Microsoft Dynamics. So in addition to managing projects for Open Door, I also uh, provide solution insights and I work with the Open Door analysts, developers and implementers uh, throughout projects and also with support. Today uh, is the second webinar of our three-part uh, spring series where we uh, are sharing key recent and planned Business Central application features. So in today's session, we'll look at Business Central operations features, uh, more specifically the ones related to inventory management. We will also uh, touch production and jobs improvements. These new features are already available in your Business Central environment or will be soon as Microsoft uh, rolls out updates. Uh, some of them are not released yet, but are available in preview mode. You can activate them through feature management and we'll see how that can be done uh, in a little bit. With their latest releases, Microsoft has been delivering functionality that has been suggested through the uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Ideas site. So the Ideas portal can be used to submit suggestions for new features directly to Microsoft. To this date, hundreds of ideas uh, have been submitted and have been deployed uh, in Business Central. Submitted ideas are reviewed by the product development team at Microsoft and the most relevant or most requested ones are added to the solution roadmap. So if you submit an idea, let us know so we can share it and upvote it. Uh, and before you submit an idea, make sure to avoid duplicates. So check if the feature already exists or if it's planned for release already. Um, and then if it does exist, you can upvote it. Ideas that are getting a lot of upvotes get the better chance of being included on the solution roadmap. You can access the site through the address you're seeing on the screen now, and you would sign in using your Office 365 credentials to the same login you use to connect to Business Central. I'll switch to Business Central so we can walk through features and functions. Um, if you're a seasoned Business Central user, you might notice that some of the features I show are not brand new. Um, you'll be right. Some have been released a little while ago, um, but uh, they are features that were already in Business Central that were recently improved. Uh, so there are additional changes to them uh, to provide additional functionality. So that's why some of those are included in this uh, presentation. So the first thing we want to see today is the feature management uh, option. Some of the feature we will work with today are available now, but they're available in preview. Um, so they need to be uh, turned on or activated by an authorized user from the feature management page in Business Central. So the goal of the preview is to let you test and prepare your data and users for the implementation of the change when the feature will be officially released. So you'll see that there is a date that indicates when a feature will become enabled or completely released in the system. And in the meantime, we can turn them on uh, and in some cases turn them back off. Uh, so, for example, uh, you are currently limited to 20 characters for item references. That is often not long enough to accommodate GTINs or GWIDs um, that have 30 or more characters. So the field has been extended to 50 characters, but that change is still in preview. So this is how you would activate it. In feature management, I can go and turn on uh, the feature to write a longer item reference. So from my list, I can enable the feature, in this case for all users, 
I will accept the change and I will let it run. So some take longer to run. This one is a very short run, so we can do it live. Others you might want to schedule so they run in the background. All features available in preview are listed here. Once they get finally released, then they drop off this list and become available in the system. Now, I would have to sign out and then sign in again to, for the changes to take effect, which I will not do in order to save time. There is another feature that is uh, related in part to finance, but also to operations that we want to show you today. Uh, under the dimensions, you have a new feature for allowed dimension values per account. This means that per account type, you can specify which values are allowed. For example, um, here, our items need to be assigned to a department. But they should be assigned to either the production department or the sales department, depending on their type. So I don't want the administration uh, option to be available, so I will not allow it. I will only allow the other two values. This makes sure that my user can't make a mistake during the data entry. It also simplifies assigning default values. Uh, also note that if a mistake is made, there is also a new feature that allows you to correct dimensions on posted transactions. We looked at this feature in the previous webinar of the series, the one about general uh, functions and finance features. On the inventory side, uh, one, good, one good improvement is that uh, there is now an assisted setup to schedule the cost adjustment and the posting when the automatic cost posting is turned off. So in your inventory setup, you have a setup for automatic cost posting. So in most cases, you will want it turned on because it ensures that you have a an accurate valuation of your inventory at all times. Except turning it on might have an impact on system performance and the overall speed of the application when transaction is posted. And that depends on volume of transactions you are processing or what type of transactions they are. So in some cases, we'll have recommended that you do not turn on automatic cost adjustments, but you then have two options. You can run the adjustment routine manually or you could use a job queue to schedule it. There is now a setup to uh, let you run the uh, adjustment at a specified frequency in the system. And when you change these adjustments, uh, this setup, so it will give you a warning that you're making a change and it will set up in the background a job queue that will run at the specified frequency to run the cost posting. Now, a uh, fair warning though, that you will still have to run the adjust cost item entries as part of your month end process. This doesn't go away, but you don't have to manually go through the hassle of setting up a job queue to schedule the automatic cost posting. Another new feature, uh, so in Business Central, we have item types on the item card and those will drive the parameters uh, that are used by the system to record inventory transactions. We have inventory items, so those regular items that you use and, and purchase and sell. You have non-inventory items, typically used for consumables for which inventory is not tracked but you want to record other operations such as consumptions, um, so supplies, glue, tape, packing materials, bolts. They're examples of non-inventory items. Um, so you want to include them on bombs, record consumption, but I don't need accuracy in my inventory tracking on those items. The third type is service for the items that are used to track labor or services when resources are not used. Those three types are not new. What is new 
is that um, you know that you don't need inventory accuracy for non-inventory or service item types, but their cost can have a direct impact on profits for sales. Um, so you want to specify default unit cost value on the item card for these items, and this is now allowed by the system. And also transactions will update this unit cost as they would do for any other item based on the costing method so that you get accurate unit cost values and you can also properly calculate margins if the item is sellable. So now we're looking at my tape. Uh, we see that I have an updatable field for my unit cost that I can maintain manually. But if I want to avoid maintaining it manually, um, well, the system will update it as I do uh, transactions. So I'm gonna go purchase. I'm gonna create a quick purchase order for this item. With my favorite vendor, London Postmaster. I'm gonna buy tape. And I'm gonna put a cost that is high enough that we will notice the update on the item card. It will tell me to refresh because I have transactions. Let me go back. And it should have recorded It should have recorded my purchase and it did. I apologize, one thing per presentation must go wrong, so this must have been it. So if I go back here, we will see that my net invoice quantity field has been updated. Other statistics on the items, since I'm not tracking inventory, have not been updated. But I see that my cost, non-inventoryable, has been uh, maintained here and I can then drive reports and statistics from these values. I also can keep track of my purchases and also my sales if I was to sell this item, as all records are kept under the item ledger entries as they would for a regular item without keeping track of the other inventory parameters. There is also a parameter where you can block the sale of an item. So for example, this packaging tape I'm using, I would not want to put on a sales order or a sales invoice to sell to a customer so I can block uh, the item from sales transactions on that field. This will let you use the item for production or other inventory transactions, but not directly on sales. Some people use price lists that apply uh, to specific groups of customers, and some just uh, relies directly on sales price on the item cards or on the customer. Uh, so in Business Central, you have flexibility on how you set up the different prices for the items, either sales or purchasing. Um, there's a new feature called the price worksheet. So we'll work with the price worksheet here. Um, so the scenario we see the most often is that you would go in the system and then you would export a spreadsheet and then you would uh, update a spreadsheet, maybe share it between colleagues, then import, in, import it back to Business Central to implement the price changes. This new feature will save you time and will make sure you have accurate information and also it makes sure that the information is centralized. So there's no need to share an Excel worksheet or worse, have several versions of the same spreadsheet floating around. So with the price worksheet, what you can do is actually suggest lines for uh, either implementing sales or purchase prices. 
and it can apply to customers, vendors, or job pricing. I'm gonna select customer here, and I'm gonna suggest lines. So what it does, it, at, it will go through the parameters or filters I set up. I'll generate for all items now, but I could focus on resources or on specific item group. I can specify an adjustment factor for my price. So I'll put, again, a large amount so we can see that the new unit price uh, might be higher uh, than, the, than what we expect. Uh, so we can see the difference. So I'm gonna run the routine here. What it does is that the system now can suggest the new prices based on my adjustment factor, and I can work directly in Business Central in draft mode. So you can generate draft price lists that you can update to implement your new prices. So we see that I have ridiculously high prices for my item now, uh, which might be good for my margins. Uh, I can review those, share with colleagues, then implement the price change when I'm ready. You can obviously manage your lines to remove some and change the different types or parameters you use. So it's a new, much easier way to prepare and deploy price changes, either for purchase prices or for sales prices. Another improvement we want to quickly look at is on the tracking side of things. So if I go to, I'm gonna use my rainbow chair here. So you know you can track lot numbers and serial numbers on items in Business Central. A new improvement that has been made to the item tracking codes is that you can create serial number information on posting of transactions. So in some industries, you need to track lot and serial numbers, but you also need additional information about the item. To support that, uh, the lot number information and serial number information pages are there, and you can add notes, uh, such as information about quality of a lot or a serial number. I'm gonna go to my lot numbers here to show an example. So I can track quality information. I can track a certificate number if I want to. I can block specific lots. I can attach my certificate of conformity or approval if I want to. All to the card. And there is now a setup to make sure that you do not forget or the users do not forget to do that. So you can activate either create serial number and phone posting, lot number and phone posting is available too. You'll also notice that there is a new package tracking tab where you can track container information. So as part of your warehouse processes, uh, sometimes you can bundle your stock in packages, boxes, containers, so on. In order to keep track of the items, you will assign unique numbers. So you can have item number one, two, three, each individual chair then, or item as a serial number. And then you can also bundle those individual items into a, a package uh, that would have its own number that you want to track in the system. This works similarly to the lot information to make sure users enter uh, package information when they create transactions, and also that it follows on all uh, documents uh, that are created as part of the item's life and tracking. The last improvement we want to take a look at before we go on and uh, take question is the new item availability per lot window. Um, so we know we can handle serial and lot, and lot numbers for items, so we can quickly see when and where items were received, where they're stored, and when and where they were sold. Uh, so item tracking has been improved to introduce the availability by a lot so that you can have a list of lots with the on-hand quantity and also the um, 
incoming quantity and additional related information. So under your availability, you have this new option to see it by lot. So I see that I have three lots on hand for my rainbow office chair, and I can see my different quantities and then drill down to see the details. I also have the option to view this information per location. Uh, for a customer where lot tracing is important or where you want to pick from specific lots, this screen is uh, very useful and was something that required a customization previously um, to, um, to be available. A true last one. We have two new documents, inventory receipts and inventory shipment. That can be used instead of journals to make um, adjustments. So there are more controls around documents with security and uh, general posting. So you can use the inventory receipts and inventory shipment documents to adjust the inventory. You can print the documents when you need to. You can release them and reopen them. Uh, they get posted. You can assign dimensions to those too. Uh, in the editor. Both documents are ready to use after you just set up the numbering series in the inventory setup page. And you can use those, for example, the receipts I would use to register an increase of inventory uh, if I need to uh, prepare my go live or adjust inventory balances in a batch, I could do that. And inventory shipments would be useful to write off uh, missing or damaged goods. Uh, that I want to deduce from my inventory and uh, make sure the information is properly recorded uh, with more controls than in a journal. So those are new documents that you can use. I will now switch back. So other features um, in production, Variants can now be used on production orders, BOMs, and routings, uh, which is a useful information uh, for um, information purposes, but also for tracking and proper planning. You can define lot sizes and use them when you calculate the duration times for production orders and resource planning. Um, so it's really useful if you need to, uh, if you measure your output as the quantity you can make in a fixed amount of time. Uh, the lot sizes is a really interesting uh, feature for those. Uh, on the job side, uh, on the planning lines and job journal lines, uh, when there is an item number, the location code and bin code is specified by default, and you can also update it. So that helps with warehouse operations because the warehouse users can locate the items more easily to be able to process the job. Uh, last one. If you are using Dynamics for Sales and the integration to BC is in place, the item availability is now synchronized so that users entering lines either on orders or quotes uh, in Dynamics for Sales can see the quantity on hand for the item. The next webinar from the series will be on June 30th. It will focus on new and planned application features for administration and technical, so think emailing, uh, for example, uh, in uh, Business Central. Um, and you can contact us to book a session with a uh, Business Central expert at hi at Open Door, uh, the address that is shown on your screen. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.